Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Lily. I am so happy that you are here with me today. In today's video, we are going to do some play with some texture pastes and some stencils because I am getting into my supplies and I'm using up some of the things that I have neglected. Now, recently I received a nice little stash of envelopes from a good friend of mine. So she gave me a bunch of these pink envelopes and what better way to use them up than with some, some texture paste. And that is what we are going to do. I also want to say thank you so much to Angie Wiley and to my sister Iris because they came to the rescue, you guys. Angie mailed me some junk mail envelopes and then my sister came by and dropped off a bag of junk mail envelopes. You guys, I heart you. Thank you so much. In one of my previous videos, I mentioned that I had ran out of junk mail envelopes, which I literally did. Can you believe that? I mean, the stash is slowly growing because, you know, we get junk mail every day. And they were thoughtful enough to mail me and drop off some junk mail envelopes. You guys, that is so awesome. So thank you very, very much for that. Okay, so I have pulled some stencils from my stencil box and also my texture pastes, which I've not used in a very long time. I love working with stencils and the texture paste, and these are some Heidi Swap texture pastes that I've had for many years, and I just haven't worked with them in a long time. And I am just going through my supplies and trying to find new and creative ways to use them, or even going back to some of the some of the techniques that I did years ago. My favorite, favorite um, stencil is this brick one, and this is a Wendy Vecchi stencil, and I love it. I love it for background. I love layering on top of it, and it's just so beautiful. And then I used this one here as a border, and this stencil is Oh my gosh, it is a plaid stencil. Thank you. I could see I could see that it says plaid in the upper right-hand corner. And look at that bottom. That one is so beautiful. This one I probably purchased at one of the craft stores, but I it is I love the ornate design and of course that parakeet or that parrot, but I used the border to stencil on the envelope flap and it just turned out so beautiful. And for that one, I used that teal shade of texture paste from the Heidi Swap collection. Unfortunately, those are no longer being made. Um, that's how old I've had them, you guys. And I had other colors, which I'm happy to say that I've already used up. Oh, this one is beautiful. This is a glitter gel by Faber-Castell. And I honestly didn't know how to use this one, so I had kind of had a research. It works just like uh, texture paste, except it is called glitter gel. And it adds dimension to your product, to your projects, just like the paste does. And I was worried that this was going to be dry because that's how old this is. I've probably had it since 2017. And, but it worked so well with the stencil and it's kind of hard to pick up here on camera, but oh, believe me, in person, it is beautiful with that glitter on it. And then I also used a pearlescent paste. And this one is also uh, by Heidi Swap, but I also use a different one that I've had since 2016 by Recollections. And I'll show you that one in just a moment. So just a beautiful pearlescent, just a subtle design on these envelopes. And after I've after I've stenciled, I could leave them as it is and use them for all kinds of different things. Or I can continue to layer and, and work and with more embellishments on the envelopes. So just, and I only grabbed a few of the stencils. Um, I have a 12 by 12 craft keeper that is full of stencils, but I had to really limit myself or else, it, you know, it just, it just, turns into a creative chaos. <laughs> this one's beautiful with the time clock. 
I don't know where this one is from. I've had this one for a very long time and I like that it has almost a collage feel to it. So we'll use that one as well. And this is one that I've also had. A, um, is that one Martha Stewart? Yes, the one with the bird is an old Martha Stewart stencil. I played with that one off camera. And that is what got me going to play and work with more texture pastes. By the way, don't stack your, your, your work until it's completely dry. Give it 24 hours, you guys. <laughs> don't do what I did. They're okay. I was able to save them, save them but they were kind of a little bit tacky still. And so you could see how I'm just lightly pulling them apart. This, I repurposed a black gift bag and it has the craft, it had the craft uh, on the inside and then black on the outside. And I just tore it up to pieces because I liked the combination of the two colors, the black and the craft color. And then I just started stenciling on it. It did kind of bleed through this, this uh, butterfly stencil but I was just playing around. I wanted to, um, you know, just really just do some mindless crafting and play around with some of my supplies. And even though they bled a little bit, I'm still going to use them because I still like the way it looks. And this bird one is so pretty. I don't know how I'm going to use these, but I love them. And I can use them to embellish. I can you know, pop them in a journal and then, um, you know, add more layers on top. So we'll see. But that is how all of this got started. Just playing with my supplies. If you have texture paste, then uh, that you haven't used in a long time, like me, I'm guilty of it. You guys, it's been years since I've used them. And uh, the last time I used them was on the Frida envelopes that I have. And I have a few Frida, if you want to see what those look like, I have a few Frida envelopes in my Etsy shop and you can hop on over there to take a look how I used texture, texture paste in the background when I created those Frida, Frida inspired envelopes. Okay, so let's start playing. If you are crafting along with me, this video is somewhat long, but I'm gonna go through different stencils and different techniques, also how to clean up your, your stencils. And at the very end, I'm going to work on a, a project with one of these envelopes and give you, give you a finished look. So just grab some supplies. It doesn't have to be envelopes. Um, it could be, you know, a paper bag like I used, whatever you have. To make it easy, I took a little bit of masking tape to tape the stencil down just to keep it in place. And then I place the envelope underneath. For easy cleanup, you guys, I'm using a silicone spatula. It just makes it so much easier to clean up the paste. These are the pastes I was talking about. These are by Recollections, which is a Michaels brand. And I bought these back in 2016. And I was super excited to use these. They were a seasonal item around Christmas time because one of them says Christmas Noel. <laughs> and it's like a snow paste with great texture. So excited to use this one. And then guess what? You guys, use it or lose it. And this one, I lost it. Can you? It is rock hard. I was so upset and I probably didn't seal it right or it's just old. 2016, that is seven years ago. Don't do that, you guys. Let's go through our supplies. I have totally neglected these, but this one here that has like a pearl lessons to it. Oh my gosh. I was so happy that it wasn't dry because I haven't used it in years. So if there's anything that you take away from this video is use your supplies. Don't neglect the supplies. Don't let them get old. I'm pointing out that there's a year on the label and it says 2016. <laughs> yeah, stop that. I'm telling that to myself. Stop that. Use the stuff. So that is what I am doing. I have mentioned it several times in my other videos. Usually when I'm using supplies, I'll say this is stuff I haven't used in a really long time. And that's because I am going through my things and I'm creating projects with the neglected items. 
and uh, every week I'm trying to do that and incorporate those old supplies into new projects. Do you see how easy it it is? Um, what is it? Blending with the with the silicone spatula. So easy, and I'm only going over the section I want. I could have done the entire thing because it it looks really nice, but I really just wanted that clock image. Oh my gosh, it is so beautiful with that center butterfly. And it's not perfect, you guys. Stenciling, just so you know, it's not about perfection, okay? Um, it, it's just about getting your paste through the, um, through the stencil. And practice makes better. It's never going to be perfect. We're working, we're working with a medium that can get a little bit messy and it can bleed a little bit. Go slow, go easy, and it'll look, it'll look amazing even if you get a little bit of bleed through. But don't rush this process, you guys. And the more you practice, the better it's going to be. And I'm not looking for perfection either, okay? I'm okay if it looks a little bit a little bit junky, a little bit messy, but trying to make it look as best as possible. So once I get a nice thin layer over that stencil, I smooth it out evenly and then carefully lift it and you're going to get a little bit of dimension. And you can see on that butterfly, one of the wings has more dimension than the other. And that's fine because it adds a little bit of variation. It adds more interest to your project. And, that, and that's what the paste is for, to add that interest to your projects. Now, I, I'm, I'm going to clean it up now. I didn't lay it flat because I don't want the paste to get onto the glass mat. And I am going to carefully clean it up. I have a, this is, this is really cool. I just have a, a, a jar with water and I place the stencils in there and then I just grab my cloth and easily wipe it off. Cleans up so nice. I could have done the same with the stencils and kept a container with water, a basin with water and then just dropped the stencils in there and then softly um, clean them up. But I don't have that kind of space on my work table to have a container of water. So this is the second best option. When you clean your stencils, be very gentle because there are sections of that stencil where if you are too rough with the wiping, you're going to lift up the plastic and it could tear your stencil. So be very careful. And I kind of did that in that upper right-hand corner. And I don't know if that's a flower, uh, but see how, I, see how I did that? I lifted it up again. So I won't be able to use that part of the stencil anymore unless I want that blob, that blob image there. Just be very careful when you clean it up just so you don't ruin your stencil. But this makes cleanup very easy and you want to do this immediately so as you don't get the paste caked on it because then it will be very difficult to remove. This is another one of my favorite stencils. It is a Tim Holtz stencil. And I love this. This is another one of my most used designs. The nice thing about this is you can use it vertically or horizontally. Whatever you like. And this one is very, very easy. Very easy to use. I also like it because it's kind of grungy where the design isn't even. And that's one thing that the Tim Holtz stencils offer. They're a little bit... Um, distressed looking and so they're not all uniform so if you make a little a little mistake with the paste guess what no one's gonna know this is a great color paste it is it looks black but it is like a pewter color and oh my gosh it is beautiful and I wasn't sure about using such a dark colored paste on the pink envelope, but the finished project or the finished look, it looks amazing. It looks like a mess. It looks like I'm playing with mud, you guys. And I was a little bit skeptical at first, 
But once you remove the stencil, look at how gorgeous that looks. See how it has that metallic, that shine, that pewter look. It looks beautiful. My sister came over and I showed her what I had been working on. And she was actually, this was one of her favorites, was, was the, uh, the dark paste. And just like I, I hesitated at first to use the paste because it was so dark, had I not played with it, I wouldn't have known the results. And that's the other thing that, that I think is important is use the supplies, even the shades that you were a little bit skeptical using because it may surprise you, you know, like this surprised me because I, I don't think I've ever used that dark shade before. That's all, that's a full container. And I'm just so happy it's not dried up. Look at how nice it comes out of the out of the bottle. And I think it's because I never opened it so as it was preserved well <laughs> in its container. Very easy to smooth over. Go very gentle. Hold your stencil in place. Make sure you don't lift it or move it as you are spreading the paste. And then just, oh, the reveal. The reveal is beautiful. I'm running out of space on the desk. I have envelopes everywhere. My work table is a um, folding table, like the picnic kind made by Lifetime. That is what I am working on. And what is, I think it's a six foot table. So picture the six foot table and I have envelopes everywhere and I was running out of space. So I had to place them on the floor and on a, on a bookshelf right next to me there. They were everywhere. And I just leave them alone, let them dry overnight. But remember, don't place them on top of each other until you've given them a good 24 hours to dry because they might just still be tacky and stick to each other. A little bit of water to clean it up. And again, go gentle when you are wiping it away. You don't want to tear into the stencil design. And it cleans up very easy as long as you do it immediately after. Don't let it dry up on you. And I actually prefer using the yellow cloths than the paper towels. I'm trying to avoid creating more waste. And that's one of the reasons I no longer use baby wipes. I haven't used those for maybe a year now. And uh, these yellow cloths that I use, I hand wash them and they, they wash up very easily. I've been using the two now for over a year and I just hand wash and dry them and then use them up over and over again. I'm going to show you how beautiful this Wendy Vecchi layered brick stencil looks. And again, I'm going to use the, the pewter Heidi Swap paste because after I used it once, I, it just became like my favorite paste to use. And you'd be surprised. I'm, I was, I'm surprised that it became my favorite because that teal colored one, you know, that's my favorite color, that those are my favorite shades. But this one just surprised me. Look at that, you guys. It looks beautiful. I love it. I'm going to tell you a little story, which is complete. Well, it's kind of relevant to this. So this video, you guys should have been up earlier. But it was delayed because on the day that I was going to do the voiceover and do all of the editing and get it ready to publish on my YouTube channel, I had a small accident. I, I fell, tripped on my own two feet, you guys, as I was walking out of my bathroom, tripped on my slipper and fell and hurt my leg. And so... You know, I wasn't able to do any type of editing or voiceover work because I was tending to my leg. <laughs> but let me share the details of my fall because I think it's hilarious. I'm okay. Um, my, my left leg is super sore. I pulled and twisted something. And so I'm walking around like a robot, but I didn't break anything as I had originally thought. So I walk out of the bathroom 
And I, as I walk out of the bathroom in the loft area, uh, I tripped on my own two feet. My, one of my slippers, the rubber sole of my slipper caught onto the carpet. I probably, you know, got lazy foot and didn't lift my foot properly. So it caught on the carpet. And as I was falling, I have a large metal book rack that holds a 12 by 12 paper. And it's the kind you, you see like at the, at Joann's and at Michael's where they hold the paper. Well, I have one of those and it's pretty large. And as I was falling, that was directly in front of me. And I thought, oh my gosh, my face and my, my chest are going to fall flat on that rack and that's going to hurt. And I, I don't want that to happen. You know, and this is like milliseconds. These thoughts are going through my mind as I'm in midair falling, knowing that my face is going to hit that metal paper rack. And so I put my ninja skills into high gear, you guys, and those, you know, secret cat skills, reflexes that I probably have. And in midair, as I'm falling, I twisted my body to the left to avoid falling on the paper rack. <laughs> All in milliseconds, you guys. And I ended up landing to the left of the paper rack just before the stairs. So I landed on the landing <laughs> and I fell all my weight on my left knee. And oh my gosh, that hurt so bad, you guys. I seriously thought that I had broken my leg or, you know, bent my knee backwards and, uh, or, you know, in the, it, I just for sure thought that my, my knee was, or my leg was broken. Let me pause really quick to show you what I'm going to do. And then I'll continue with the details of my fall. Recently, I saw a video by Natasha at Treasure Books where she made her own texture paste. And I wanted to do that, but I didn't have all the ingredients at the ready. So then I thought, I have this temp tempura. I want to say tempura, like shrimp, you know, tempura shrimp, but that's not right. Tempura paint. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it. So I have this gold paint that I purchased just recently and I thought that it would be a good idea to mix it with this pearlescent paste and kind of create a gold pearlescent texture paste. And that is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to add a little bit of the tempera paint and mix it all up and see what happens. Um, so that is what I'm going to do. So while I'm mixing that, let me finish telling you my story really quick. So I fall and I am worried and I'm in pain that I have broken my leg. That is how hard I fell. I'm upstairs. My parents are downstairs. And this is in the evening, maybe about 8, 8.30 in the evening. And my parents are downstairs. And my mother, she's like, oh, my gosh, what's happening? Are you okay? What was that? Did you fall? And as I'm moaning and groaning on the floor... Um, she's already up the stairs. She just raced up the stairs because I bet you anything, it sounded like the roof had collapsed. <laughs> she says it just, it was a very loud thump. I didn't knock anything down. So there was no, no crash. It was just a big thump, you know, bam. You know, I probably weigh, I don't know, like 150, 155 pounds and bam, right onto the carpet. So she's up the stairs and she's looking at me asking if I'm okay and I'm still on the floor and it seemed like an eternity laying there on the floor and I didn't want to get up. I didn't want to feel anything because I was worried about my leg being broken. So, you know, she's worried. She's making sure that I'm okay. She says, can you move your leg? Can you bend your leg? My cousin also came up the stairs and he's standing behind my mother and they're like worried, you know, that, that I have broken my leg. So then my mother says, let's try, you know, let's see if you can stand up and move your leg. I was able to move my leg and I was able to stand up. Really quick, brief pause. Look at the paste, you guys. I, I thought this was going to be a major fail because it wasn't mixing well. It almost kind of curdled. It looked like cottage cheese. <laughs> so, for a minute there, I'm like, I, this is not going to work. And then I thought, oh, that's okay. I'm going to edit it out of the video if it doesn't work anyway, right? Because it is just not, it's not mixing well. 
and I probably didn't have the proper tools to mix. I'm sure if I would have had a bowl, it would have mixed nice and smooth, but it's looking a little bit like cottage cheese. But I thought I'm going to go ahead and use it and see what happens because that's what playtime is all about. It's about experimenting with your supplies and if you don't do it, you'll never know. So I'm now standing up and I'm able to move my knee. So I'm like, okay, it doesn't hurt to bend it. So it's not, it's not broken, I don't think. And within seconds, you guys, my knee, it starts swelling so bad. Like I have chubby knees as it is, but I could tell the difference between a chubby knee and a swollen knee. And this knee was getting really big. I mean, like ripe for our eyes. My mother's looking at it and I'm like, oh my gosh, look at my knee. And it's just getting big. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's it. I fractured it. You know, I broke it. Something's, you know, oh no. <laughs> so I'm panicking. And all of these other things are going through my mind. I've got a 5K on April 29th. I've got a 10K on May 29th. I have another 10K in June. I'm like, oh my gosh, my running career is over. <laughs> it's not really a career, but you know what I mean. Okay, let me stop really quick. You guys, the gold paste worked. It's not so cottage cheesy anymore because once I smoothed it over the stencil, oh my gosh, that gold sheen, just beautiful. And you can see the difference here. Look at the difference in the colors. There's the pearlescent, and then here is the one with the gold in it. Absolutely gorgeous. I love how that turned out. I did want a brighter, more yellowish gold, just like the color in the bottle, but I was experimenting and pretty satisfied with the results. So I will be doing that again and in a separate video or in the future, I will try out Natasha's recipe for making paste and then actually making something that is a more yellow gold. So um, Natasha does a super easy, uh, friendly recipe with, I think it's only like three ingredients to make your own paste, your DIY paste. So if you haven't seen it, go over to Treasure Books, watch Natasha's video, which was, um, released just a few days ago. Look at how beautiful that looks. Oh, came out so gorgeous. So I'm thinking that's it. I can't run anymore. It's over. I barely started and now it's going to end. That's what was going through my mind. Okay. Nothing else but my running. And, and so I, I hobble over to my bedroom because now there's nothing else I can do, but but rest my leg. So I'm worried about my knee. I go to my bed. My mother goes downstairs, comes back up with a cold compress. And, you know, she says, you know, put this on there for the swelling. And then, and then let's use, um, let's use uh, Arnica salve and then slather it all over your knee. But first let let the cold compress. So what she was saying is, you know, let the cold compress rest on your knee for a while. And then right before you go to bed or you go to sleep, I was already in bed, <laughs> right before you go to sleep, put some Arnica salve all over. So I smothered that Arnica salve. Arnica salve, you guys, it's amazing. It's great for bruises and for uh, muscle pain. It's uh, it's like a cream, like a gel. It's like a gel. Um, almost has the, the consistency of like petroleum jelly, but it's Arnica, Arnica salve. And that stuff, we grew up with that stuff. And, and so now you can get it like it, you know, you can get it at your drugstore, like Walgreens or, you know, like, like Walmart, places like that. It's called Arnica, Arnica salve. It is great. This is not sponsored by Arnica. <laughs> I'm just sharing what I used. So I slather the Arnic salve on my knee and then call it a night, go to sleep. Get up the next morning, you guys. The swelling has gone down. I'm able to move my knee. In fact, my knee does not even pain me. It is scratched up. There is a big red scrape across my knee. Um, and even though I was wearing pants, I it's rug burn that is on, on ouch, yeah, rug burn on my knee. But my knee is not bad. I'm able to move it and bend it. However, my leg in whole, it's, it, 
it is, it's hurt. I don't think I broke anything. Um, nothing is like, I don't think I fractured anything, but it is sore because as I was in midair falling, when I twisted, the ironic thing is that I twisted to prevent my, myself from hitting the paper rack, but now I can't twist it because it hurts. So I can't twist my leg. So I'm walking very slowly like a robot. I can't make any sudden turns. I can't twist my body because it hurts from my knee up to my hip, like my thigh, all of that. And if I twist my left foot to the right, then I feel this pull from the tip of my toe up all the way up to my hip. So we're not doing that. We're not twisting my foot. And I've got Arnica gel all over up and down my leg. <laughs> I'm just slathering that stuff on there and it does feel good. I didn't take any medicine because I'm not in a lot. I'm not in pain. It's just discomfort. And, you know, if you move it like that, then it hurts. The doctor would say, well, don't move it like that. I didn't go to the doctor either because I don't think it's that serious. Like if I, I would have gone like to the ER if I, if I was unable to like bend my knee or lift it, but I may, I'm able to walk too, very slowly, uh, very slow. I can sit very slow. Oh my gosh. Look at this one, you guys. Okay. Back to this. This is a, oh my gosh, I can't, Charlotte, I think this, oh, this is the plaid stencil. And that design is so beautiful. It's almost like a, like a filigree. I think that's what it's called. And it looks so beautiful with this pearlescent. That is going to look so beautiful in, in the junk journals. But this can also be used as a beautiful greeting card envelope. Isn't that nice? So those are turning out beautiful. Okay, so my leg, long story short, you guys, even though I have been talking about it for a long time, but long story short, I did break a leg. My leg is not fractured. It is just sore. I believe I may have pulled like a muscle or something when I twisted in midair. And so that is what I am nursing right now is my sore leg. I probably won't be able to run for maybe a week, which I'm really bummed about. Um, hopefully the fun 5K that I'm doing on, I said April 29th, didn't I? Um, I do have a fun 5K on, yeah, it's on April 29th. There is a place here in the, um, in the city I live in that is called Thanksgiving Point. It is in northern Utah County and is in the city of Lehigh, which is where I live. And they have a tulip festival every year. And they have a 5K in the tulip gardens. I mean, this is, this is a huge place. Acres and acres of floral gardens, rose gardens, and there's waterfalls and, and petting zoos and just all kinds of things. It's great. Look it up. It's called Thanksgiving Point. And they have Thanksgiving gardens. So I am planning to do the 5K with two of my grandkids that morning. So if I'm not able to run, then I will walk the 5K. It's in two weeks. So I'm hoping that I'm able to do that. Fingers crossed, you guys. But I will be nursing my leg. Yeah. Oh, see, even like as I'm telling you about it, I'm kind of lifting it and kind of turning it to see how far it can go without it causing me um, discomfort. But I'm able to go up and down the stairs just very slowly and without putting much weight on it. Oh, oh my God. You guys, be careful. I always wonder when people fall, when they say, oh, you know, so-and-so fell. I'm like, how? They just fell from walk. Did they fall, you know, going down the stairs? Did they fall when they were running, were they climbing something? No, they just fell from walking. I understand that now. That was me. I fell from just walking. And I try to be so careful because the last thing any of us want is to get hurt. So be careful. Be careful. Um, this was just 
there was nothing I could do to prevent this fall. I was simply walking out of the bathroom, wearing my slippers, coming back to my desk so I can edit a video. Oh, so be careful, you guys. Be careful when you walk. Be careful with your surroundings. Be aware because I don't want any of you, anybody, to hurt yourself. Can you imagine? You know, I, we're, I'm getting older and just stuff doesn't heal as fast. You know, so, oh, I can't, I can't even, you know, I, I have family members that have fallen and have broken their hips and broken their legs just but they were they were climbing things why are you climbing why are you climbing things and you're 80 don't climb things when you're 80 I was climbing a ladder the other day in the garage and I didn't have anyone to spot me and I stopped myself because don't climb ladders by yourself that's all I have to say about that so just be careful you guys be careful. Okay, I am going to show you here what how easy it is to use this border one on the flap. Well, all of the stencils are pretty easy. Even the ones that are really intricate, don't let that intimidate you. Like I said earlier, you just want to do, start with a thin layer of paste and then just very carefully spread it over the design work slowly and if you've not ever tried using stencils um, but you want to just practice practice and practice and practice these stencils can also be used with spray paints and with inks like ink pads and a dauber so if you have the stencils, but you don't have the paste, you can use your stencils in so many other ways. That was like a little rhyme. But that, these are looking great. I don't know how many. I probably made about 50, 50 envelopes because I also made a whole bunch off camera. These are the type of things that I do every day. And I don't always film my process for all the projects that I do um, because sometimes I wonder if you would even be interested in watching things like this so these are the busy things the things that I like to work on daily just random random projects but then um, I you know I talked to my sister about it and I said hey do you know what do you think she, and then my sister she's almost like my like my uh, like a mentor <laughs> or a person I just toss ideas to and like a counselor do you know what I mean she gives me really good feedback and what she says to me is always film your process always film everything you do everything and then um and then just kind of tuck it away and then look back at it and just share it with everybody you know share your process share all the things you do behind the scenes and here is, I was talking to her the other day and we were talking about my doodly and scribbly faces. And, uh, and so I made some doodly faces and I asked her to make some doodly faces and she made some and they look completely different. I don't have hers to show you, but you know, hers is, is different. She doesn't like the way they turn out, but it's her art. It's her, <laughs> it's her work, which is unique to her. There is no right or wrong when it comes to drawing faces, you guys. Um, they're all going to be different. I have tried to change the look of my scribbly faces, and they always look like 80s ladies. 80s. Big hair, lots of layers, lots of, you know, lots of hair. Big hair. And that was the 80s. I am from the 80s, and in the 80s, I had giant hair, you guys, and I was so proud of my big hair. And so my ladies, my scribbly faces, always look like this. They just don't change. I've been drawing the same faces for years and years. You know, they've evolved a little bit, but overall, they are 80s ladies. So I did these um, a few days before, and I was just, again, doodling at my desk, and then I just cut them out. I drew them on watercolor paper, 
and uh, then cut them out. I thought, and I left them on my desk. So after I was done stenciling on the envelopes, I thought it would be a good idea to just grab one of those little faces and make a project, uh, a complete project with these. This is a very similar style to the Frida envelopes that I have done in the past. And those are the ones that I was talking about earlier that I have on my Etsy shop or in my Etsy shop, I should say. And instead of doing scribbly faces, I actually used a Dina Wakely Frida stamp and then collaged on the envelope, which had the stencil in the background. So again, if you want to see those, just hop on over to the Etsy shop so you can um, have a visual because what I should have done was reached for one so I can show you on camera, but I didn't think about that until just now that I am talking about it. If you don't have a scribbly face, you can use any other die cut, a floral. You can use, um, an, uh, you know, something like a cute little car die cut, a camper, um, other faces, a cute little bird or butterfly as your focal point. I'm using my scribbly faces because that is what I have on my desk. And I love the way the black and white scribbly face looks with that brick background. I reached over and grabbed some of my Tim Holtz phrases. And after I reached for the black ones, I thought, I wonder what it would look like if I used white, a white phrase instead. And so I reach over for that in just a moment because I also didn't want it to just blend into the background. And so I'm going to go through and find the exact same phrase, but in white. These are great stickers because it's obvious they come in black and they come in white. So depending on your project, you can use either or. I wasn't sure how it was going to look. So I'm just going to use both. And they actually turn out, they turn out great. I was worried that the black would kind of fade and not pop as much. But it turns out really good. Once you've removed the sticker, you cannot put it back. So you are forced to use it. <laughs> I'm going to cut it down and just kind of stagger it across the front. Don't be afraid to cut down your stickers. If you have stickers and there are portions of it that you just, you know, don't care for, or they just don't work with the project that you are working on, don't be afraid to take a pair of scissors and only, you know, and cut around and use the parts that you want from the sticker. Fray stickers like this, you can also split and break it up. You can combine it with others. So you can take a phrase from one, cut it apart, blend it or work with another. So yeah, don't be afraid to cut things up and use them. Many, many years ago, many years ago, I taught a scrapbooking class and I, I had told all the guests to show up with, um, pictures because we were going to work on scrapbooking pages. And so everyone brought their own pictures. And, and so I was, you know, teaching this class and I grabbed my scissors and I started cutting up my photograph because there were sections in there that I didn't want to use in my scrapbook. You know, things like, you know, in the background, maybe there was a, a trash can or, you know, something there and it just, I didn't want it to be in my, my photograph. And so I was cutting it up and one of the attendees, she looked at me, she says, oh my gosh, what are you doing? Why are you cutting up that picture? Because, you know, photographs are like priceless, right? And it took her a minute to kind of understand or to, to, to be, um, to kind of process the fact that I was cutting up a picture. So I explained what I was doing, you know, it's okay. If you have a picture and there's a section on the right hand side that, you know, your picture's not centered or, you know, like I said, there's something there that isn't appealing or whatever. Um, just be okay. It's okay to cut it up. And this is, of course, this is before you know, um, at least before I was knew that there was like editing software, where you can edit your pictures and, you know, just print what you want. In those days, we were just printing the pictures and cutting out the sections we didn't want. 
And so after I explained that it was okay to cut up the pictures, um, you know, it made sense to her. But she was like, what's the term? Flabbergasted, you know. She was like, what? What are you doing? She thought I was crazy. Well, the same thing with stickers. If, uh, if you have stickers or pictures, maybe you still, you still don't like cutting into your pictures if you're a scrapbooker. Um, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> use, use what you like with whatever it is you're using. Cut it up. Take it apart. Make it your own. I'm using the ultimate glue because I want to make sure that it adheres to that paste. And I know I have a cocktail glue in that little bottle, but that's a mixture of all kinds of different things. And so I, I reached for the, um, it's called, it's called the ultimate glue. Yeah, it works really well. It works on plastic, works on glass, works on metal. It is a great, great glue. And if you are, by the way, if you're interested in, um, in some of the items that I am using today, I do have an Amazon storefront and I have an affiliate link in the description area below. If you are interested in uh, purchasing any of these items or even just looking, you know, um, to read more information about these items, you can just click on that link. If you do make a purchase, I thank you in advance. You guys are awesome. I do have to let you know that I do earn a small commission when you do make a purchase. So thank you so much for supporting my Amazon store. Okay, so do you see how I'm using both the black and the white stickers? And I love how they both turn out. It's a little bit difficult to kind of see what that looks like on camera, but believe me, in person, they look great. Actually, I have my sister to thank for that. So a lot of the projects I work on when my sister comes over, you know, I, I show her, oh, look what I did. You know, like a little kid showing off their new toy. That's me with my sister. Look what I made. There were tags that I've recently made from packaging. And she watched that video and she liked the video. Well, she came over a few days after that. And she says, hey, I want to see those tags that you made. I want to see them in person. Well, she she looked at them and she says, oh my gosh, Lillian, these, the video doesn't make, doesn't, doesn't make, um, what's it, what, what, what am I trying to say? The video doesn't do these tags any justice. No justice. These are so pretty in real life. And I always worry. Um, okay. Maybe not so much worry, but I always wonder if you watching can actually, you know, uh, tell what the finished pro project looks like uh, because it does look very different and I'm sure with your own projects if you are you know if you make videos and you share pictures um, on social media or even on YouTube you wonder if if you're getting across the the true design of the project well my sister um, paid me a compliment by saying that you know that that the tags looked even better in real life. So that was, that was really nice to hear. Thank you, sister. I am going to splatter because I just, I couldn't stop with just the stickers. I wanted to give them a little more interest. So I'm going to use some ink splatters and I am using a Heidi Swap Shine. You guys know that my favorite is the Gold Shine. Uh, but I am running low. I'm just about out of it. But I also have other colors of Heidi Swap Shine. And it's so sad that these are discontinued. But I have other great ones from Tim Holtz and um, from Ranger and other designers. But I have to say, I have to admit, these have been my all-time favorite. And gosh, I would love to see these come back the Heidi Swap Shines. And so I have several in different colors. And now that I have used up my gold, I'm using the other colors. And this one's beautiful. It is a turquoise metallic shine. And I like the droplets look more than the spray look. I mean, they're both beautiful, but this is my favorite technique using these sprays. 
And I covered up the little faces because I didn't want to give them any freckles. And uh, maybe not so much freckles because I have been known to splatter and then a big blob lands on the scribbly face and then I've ruined it. So if there's areas of your project that you don't want any splatters on, make sure you cover it. Don't use tissue like I did because that's just going to bleed through. I wasn't thinking. Use a piece of uh, post-it note or copy paper and it won't, you know, won't bleed through as much as this tissue. So one of the scribbly faces did get a little freckle because <laughs> it bled through. Gosh, sometimes I don't think straight, you guys. And then grabbed a little piece of tissue to kind of pick up any excess. There was a little blob there on one of them. So we will do the reveal by removing the tissue off of the face. I'm being careful because that's when I realized that it was bleeding through and I didn't want to press it onto the face. So you could see a little freckle on the faces, but oh my gosh, look at that. Oh, I love these so much, you guys. I am just happy that I'm sharing this video with you guys and I hope that it provides you with some inspiration to play with your supplies and get messy and experiment as well because you just never know what you're going to get if you don't play and experiment. So that is what I am sharing with you today. And I really love the way these turned out. So I'm gonna go now and I'm going to go work on the other 50. And they may not all have scribbly faces, but they will have some type of focal point. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate you so much. You guys take care and I will see you next time.